Whenever you speak or hear about death or the grave, we tend to become a little bit scared. You know, we don't really want to hear about it. We may think twice about coming to lectures or talks that even come close to these topics or issues. But to be totally honest with you all, I want you all to be shaking in your boots. I want you all to have nightmares about this topic. I really, really honestly want everyone to be really scared. My dear brothers and sisters, when death strikes, there is no turning back. You will not understand the reality of death until it actually happens. Subhanallah, we sit there and we see their own eyes die. And subhanallah, you don't actually know what's happening. He's sitting there, he may be breathing heavy. And you think, what's going on? The person is there. I remember when my father, may Allah have mercy on him and all the Muslims that have passed away. I remember seeing him after his death. And wallahi, I touched him. And I thought he's still there in body. But what's the difference? His soul is gone. He couldn't hear me. He couldn't see me. He couldn't talk to me anymore. Why? His ruh came. His ruh went. And that is a reality which we all have to be careful of. And we all have to make sure that we're ahead of this reality. So now it is time to change and make that change for the journey that we will embark. So to set the atmosphere tonight, inshallah, I'll talk a little bit about death before the punishment of the grave. Death is a reality that happens before the grave. As I said earlier, most of us like to forget about talking about death and always hearing about death. Why? So we can, listen, so we can think about the dunya. We're happy listening to the dunya, about, about the dunya. We're happy making money. We're happy buying cars. We're happy having children. Why do you want to talk about death for? Why do you want to hear about death? It only saddens your heart. But I ask you all a question. How could we forget about death when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and please whenever you hear the word Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what do we say and what do I want to hear? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to his prophet Inna ka mayyitun wa innahum mayyitun Verily you and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will die and surely they too will die. Now you think about it. If Allah was going to save anyone from death, who would it be? Wouldn't it be our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Wouldn't Allah have saved him? So who are we? Let us listen to what some of the people of the past have, th uh, have said. We all heard of uh, Imam Shafi'i. I'm sure everyone's heard of him. A man went to visit him at the time of his death, when he was on his deathbed. He was sick. And this man asked, he inquired, how are you? How do you feel? And Imam Shafi'i said, I am traveling away from life, leaving my brothers, drinking from the glass of the end, coming soon to see the evil that I have done and will soon arrive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know whether to congratulate myself, to know whether I'm entering paradise, or to condole myself, knowing that I'm going to enter the hellfire. And then he started to weep. We're talking about someone who has got so many rewards. We're talking about Imam al-Shafi'i. Subhanallah, how many people say I'm from the madhab of, or follow the madhab of the Shafi'i? How much reward has this person got? 
Umar radiallahu an al-Faruq, after he was stabbed, he asked his son, he was dying, he asked his son Abdullah, he said, place my face on the dirt. And Abdullah thought, what's he doing? You know, sometimes uh, the people that die, they might lose their mind, they might get into consciousness and out of consciousness. So he thought he didn't know what he was doing. He told him again, place my face in the dirt. And he thought again, maybe he doesn't know. And on the third time, Umar radiallahu anh said to him, place my face in the dirt, may you have no mother. At that time he knew that Umar knew what he was saying. So Abdullah put his face in the dirt. And Umar radiallahu anh, who was one of the most strongest people to uphold Islam. And we all know how fierce he was. We all know how strong he was. He started to weep. And he started to weep to where the dirt underneath him started to become mud and started to get stuck in his eyes and in his beard. And then he said, radiallahu anhu, he said, woe to you, O Umar, and woe to the mother of Umar if Allah doesn't forgive you. Who are we talking about? We're not talking about ordinary Muslims like me and you. We're talking about Umar, radiallahu anhu. He was scared for his, his, his safety in the hereafter. Another one of the Salaf said, he was talking to a man, he said, how many years have gone past in your life? The man replied, 60. And he, then he went and said, he goes, to Allah we belong, and to him we shall return. Imagine you were 60 years old, and there may be some of us here that are 60. And he said, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong, and to him we shall return. So the man said to him, do you know the meaning of that statement that you just said? Do you honestly know? He said, I belong to Allah as a servant and I am going to return to him. So whoever knows and understands this statement, he should know that he's going to be stopped. And whoever knows that he's going to be stopped, he should know what? He's going to be questioned in the grave. And whoever knows he's going to be questioned in the grave, he should prepare himself for the answer. So this 60 year old became a bit scared and he said, what should I do? And he said, it's easy. And again he said, what should I do? And he said, the rest of your life, live in good. Do good deeds. Because if you live like that, everything you've done in the past will be forgiven. But if you live an evil life for the rest of your life, you're going to be punished for that and everything you've done in the past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa al-ghafur rahim He is the most gracious, most merciful. And the majority of sinners always say this. Ya why are you doing this? Allah ghafur rahim Subhanallah. Allah is most forgiving. But we have to know and understand who was shadid al iqab He is the most strict in punishment. So if you sinned all your life and died on sin, why should He forgive you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive you. Allahu alam. But why are you testing Allah's mercy? How do you know? Would you want to sit one day in the hellfire? One day. I don't think so. You must be strong enough, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, not to be pulled into the dunya. The older you get, the harder it is to let go. Believe me, even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, the son of Adam grows old and also two desires grow old with him. He said the first, the love for this dunya, the wealth, and also the love to live long. You start to become scared when you get older. You think, oh my God, me, I'm 33 now. SubhanAllah, I'm thinking I'm halfway there. We start to get scared and you find the older people, it's harder for them to give. It's harder for them to let go of their wealth. This dunya will keep pulling at you even if you had all the riches in the world. The Prophet Muhammad SallAllahu Alaihi said in the hadith, if the son of Adam had two valleys of wealth, imagine two valleys, he would want a third. Allah, we're not going to be content. You could have a million you want two. You could have two, you want three. We never give up. And then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the only thing that will fill the stomach of the son of Adam is what? Is dust. It's dust when you end up in your grave. Then you'll be satisfied with what you have. 